Welcome to Chapter 5 of the Book of Judges, the Song of Deborah and Barak. Deborah and Barak attacked uh, the army of Sisera, defeated uh, the army, and now they are having a song to commemorate that defeat. And it begins, And Deborah and Barak, son of Avinaam, sang in that day. So it's a song that they sang. And said, In the rule of chiefs in Israel, in the resolve of people, bless the Lord. The rule of the chiefs, God has used Israel with the chiefs leading the people and the resolve of the people to go to war. Bless the Lord. Hear, O kings, in the imperative. Hear. Give ear, O satrape. And you can add that to your English derivatives book, Satrap, transliteration. I shall sing to the Lord, and I shall strum to the God of Israel. Now, this is an important part here. I think it, King James has, I shall sing to the Lord, and I shall sing to the God of Israel. But the uh, Hebrew has two different words. So does the Greek. But yet the King James translators decided to make it one word. Why? I don't know. But i just bringing you out the, um, the air of, the, of their way. Uh, strumming to God, it was with a stringed instrument. And it mentioned stringed instrument many places in the Bible. Today we have guitars. A lot of guitars are in churches. Some churches, uh, denominations, so to, so, so to speak, uh, prohibit instruments. And I don't know why it's in the Bible, but yet uh, denominations and people can make up all kinds of strange rules. But you have to follow God's word. And if God has, uh, the, uh, I shall sing to the Lord and I shall strum to the God of Israel, well then strum to the God of Israel. Play your guitars and violins or whatever. O Lord, in your exodo, exodus, we have the book of Exodus, the exodus from out of Seir. Now, Seir is a mountain, and this is the whole mountain here from Aqaba all the way up to the Dead Sea is uh, Seir. And it was uh, given to uh, uh, the the brother of uh, Isaac, uh, not Ishmael, um, Esau. And this was his land, the Edomites, which means red. They were down in this area. It says, uh, your exodus from out of Seir and your departing from out of the field of Edom, the earth was shaken. Now, it could be talking about when they uh, had left and come across this area, but they went around Edom, so they didn't war with Edom or anything. So... Here I see there's a starting to become an interesting, uh, significant place of a possible future event that is, has not taken place yet, where Deborah saw this, and they wrote this, from your departing from out of the field of Edom, down here, the earth was shaken, and indeed the heaven was disturbed, and the clouds dripped water, well, you know, um, thunder, lightning, rain, all that. Mountains shook from the face of the Lord. This Sinai from the face of the Lord God of Israel. And Sinai is down uh, over in the um, area towards the uh, west here. Mount Sinai, could, it's talking, it could be talking about, um, or it probably is at Mount Sinai. And it shook, the mountains shook. Now, mountains are not that hard, three, four thousand feet, more of a hill to people who live in, like in the Rockies and the Himalayas and so forth. In the days of Samigar, that was the third judge, son of Anath, in the days of Eiel, the ways failed, and Jael was the woman who killed Sisara with the tent peg in her hand and hammer. Uh, and they went by shortcuts. They went by ways 
being turned aside. Now, exactly what that's referring to, I'm not sure. The ones dwelling in Israel failed. They failed until of which time Deborah rose up, that a mother rose up in Israel. They selected new gods, the people of Israel. Then uh, cities of rulers waged war, waged war, period. Spears appeared for the protection of young women, even a spear of 40,000 in Israel. Now, Mount Seir, in what it's talking about here, is a, has some places that I believe that are uh, interesting. Uh, as I mentioned, Esau was given Mount Seir, mentions that in Joshua 24, 4 and other places. And the Exodus 25, 8 to 11 says, Thus says Adonai Kyrios, because Moab and Seir, Moab and Mount Seir, said, in the manner of all the nations is the house of Judah. It's the same as everybody. On account of this, behold, I will disable the shoulder of Moab from the cities of his extremities. The choice land, the house of Beth Jeshimoth, above the spring of the city by the sea. So it must have been someplace up here or down here. Of the sons of Kadem, I have given them the sons in addition for an inheritance, so that there should not be a memory of the sons of Ammon, and that was their way up north, among the nations. And in Moab, uh, down here, uh, Moab is in between, I will execute vengeance, and they shall realize that I am the Lord. And then Seir is mentioned again uh, in a prophecy uh, in Ezekiel 20, 35, 1 to 15. It says, And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O son of man, turn your face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. And say to it, Thus says the Lord, the Lord, Behold, I am against you, Mount Seir, and I will stretch out my hand against you, and I will make you into a wilderness, and you shall be made desolate. And I will make your cities desolate, and you will be a wilderness. Well, it's not. It still is. There's a lot of people living that in that area. Big cities, 50,000 someplace in here, maybe that, I'm not sure. You shall, and you shall know that I am the Lord, because you became an eternal enemy and sat in place against the house of Israel with treachery by the hand of enemies with a sword in time of iniquity at the last. So now the last times here. There is something going on here. It's showing about uh, Seir in the last times. On account of this, as I live, says the Lord, the Lord, since you sinned unto blood, even blood shall pursue you. And blood you detested, even blood shall pursue you. And I will appoint Mount Seir for a wilderness. And it's not a wilderness now, but I believe some type of uh, the whole southern part of uh, this area all down in here is all going to be wilderness, desolate, nobody living there. I believe it'll be eradicated by some type of a maybe nuclear uh, bombs or something, neutron bombs, something really bad that people won't be able to live there any longer. And then they move up further north and uh, Jerusalem is no longer the capital, but Mount Moron, uh, west of the Sea of Galilee, and the, says all that in the last 10 chapters of the book of Ezekiel. So I will destroy from it men and beasts, and I will fill up your hills and your ravines of the slain, and in all your plains, ones being slain by the sword shall fall among you. I will establish you an eternal, destin uh, an eternal desolation, uh, and uh, your cities no way shall be inhabited any longer. But we know that they are inhabited now, and um, I want to get rid of this thing on the side. And you shall know that I am the Lord, on account of your saying the two nations and the two places will be mine, and I shall inherit them, and the Lord is there, the, these countries, and now it's Jordan today. Now, how far in the future this is, I don't know. On account of this, as I live, says Kyrios, even I will do to you according to your hatred and according to your zeal, which you did in your detesting them, the Jews. I will be known to you whenever I judge you, and you shall know that I am the Lord. And it goes on and on. You can um, read 
all of uh, all of that. Then, then we'll go back to the original. So, uh, seer now v- starts up in uh, verse uh, ten. O ones mounting upon beasts of burden, upon covered royal chariots, sitting down upon a judgment seat, and going by the way, utter uh, rulers, basically, worldly rulers, maybe, a sound of men playing music in the midst of ones making merry. There they shall give righteousness to the Lord. O righteousness, grow in strength in Israel. And that should be our prayer today, that righteousness would... um, be in Israel, not unrighteousness, which I see today. I believe eventually Israel will, in the future, in his last 10 chapters of Ezekiel, shows a righteous Israel. When that will be, could be a long ways in the future. Then shall go down into her cities the people of the Lord, King James has gates instead of cities. Awaken, awaken, O Deborah, awaken. Awaken, speak with an ode. That's like a poem. Rise up, O Varak, and take captive of your captivity, O son of Avinam, Avinoam. Then his strength was magnified. O Lord, abase to me the one stronger than me. People Ephraim punished them in the valley. That was the, the Jews uh, with um, Barak, uh, that came up with Deborah up north. Your brother Benjamin among your peoples. Ephraim rooted them out among Amalek. After you, Benjamin with your peoples. From out of me, Machir. Now, I don't know the only place it appears and now exactly what that is. I can't say. I looked it up and tried to figure it out. But They came down searching out. And from out of Zebulon, growing in strength, in chiefdom. So now all these tribes are going to be mentioned. Um, growing in chiefdom of the narrative of a scribe. And uh, the rulers were in Issachar with Deborah, even Issachar. So Varak in the valley sent out his footmen in the divisions of Reuben in great restrictions of heart. Why with me did you settle between the sheepfolds to listen to whistlings arousing to go through for the ones of Reuben? in great trackings out of heart. It sounds like maybe Reuben didn't want to go and with, uh, I'm not sure, with uh, Deborah and Barak as much as the others. Uh, Gilead on the other side, and Gilead was up there further north on the western si- uh, eastern side of the Jordan, uh, encamped on the other side of the Jordan. And Dan, why does he sojourn in boats? And he was by the Mediterranean. Asher sojourns by the shore of seas, and at his breaches, uh, he will camp. Zebulon, a people berating his soul to death. And exactly what that was referring to, I'm, uh, I'm not really sh- sure there. Now, why this doesn't want to jump, I don't know. Hmm. Let's see if I can move this thing over here. No, I guess not. Well, maybe that did do it. No, well... Uh, I'll go over here and move it myself. Naphtali, another the tribe, was upon the heights of a field. Kings came and deployed. Then the kings of Canaan waged war in Tanakh at the water of Megiddo. A desire for wealth of silver they did not have. Now, I believe this is a future event today. Even today, the kings, uh, Canaan and Tanakh, uh, it mentions in Joshua 17, 11, this Tanakh and Megiddo are mentioned together uh, on the borders of Manasseh, and that's sort of the central part of, of um, Israel, and also up towards where Syria is on the um, eastern side of the Jordan. And then in Judges 127, it says, Manasseh did not remove Tanakh or Megiddo, so those areas were up there further north. And then it mentions in 1 Kings 4.12 of Solomon's rulers being in Megiddo. And then in 2 Kings 9.27, Ahaziah, the king of Judah, was fleeing Yehu, the king of Israel, and he was struck and he died in Megiddo, it says. 
So Megiddo is mentioned before this place here and after Ahaziah's later and Solomon. And then uh, we get to these prophetic places on Megiddo in, in uh, Isaiah 10, 20 to 30. Uh, 20 to 34, uh, it, it says, um, And it will be in that day no longer will the one being left behind uh, in, of Israel proceed, and the ones being preserved of Jacob no longer should be yielding upon the ones wronging them. But they will be yielding upon God, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. And I don't see that today. It's a future event. And the one being left behind of Jacob will be relying upon God, having strength. And if the people of Israel should become as the sand of the sea, the vestige of them shall be preserved, which the future event. For the matter is being completed and rendered concise in righteousness. For the Lord is the one rendering the matter concise. The Lord of forces and military shall act in the entire world the entire world. So this is a future event for sure. On account of this, thus says the Lord of hosts, do not fear my people, O ones dwelling in Zion from the Assyrians, and that would be the people from uh, over where Iraq and that area. For with a rod he shall strike you, for he brings a calamity upon you, beholding the way of Egypt. Now, who is this? And God beholding the way of Egypt. Now, it could be talking about a future event uh, where um, it mentions how, uh, we'll get into that to the next quotation here about Josiah, but we'll continue this. And it says, for yet a little time, and I will cease the anger, but my rage is against their plan. And the Lord God of the forces shall rise against them according to the calamity of Midian. And Midian, we find out here in this chapter, uh, next chapter, uh, with, uh, comes against Gideon uh, in the place of affliction. And his rage is by the way of the sea and to the way according to Egypt. And now it's again uh, somebody going to Egypt, though. And it will be in that day I shall remove his yoke from your shoulder, whoever the attacker is, and the fear of him from you. And the yoke shall be ruined from your shoulder, and... He shall come into the city of Angai, and shall go by to Megiddo. And in Machmash he shall place, uh, he shall, well, it goes on. You can read that. I guess I didn't put the rest of it. But so this ruler is coming down, going to be uh, going through Megiddo. Now, it could be referring to this next section here where uh, it talks about, uh, I think it starts here. And he sent, I'm sorry, it starts down here. Uh, and after all these things, which Josiah, the king of Judah, prepared for the house, Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt, descended up against the king of the Assyrians. And that could be what it was talking about, but it could be a future event. At the river Euphrates, to wage war against him at Harchemis, the famous battle of Karchemish. The Assyrians uh, were fighting against Pharaoh Necho in Egypt. And Necho came up through Israel, uh, and he came up to Megiddo. And Josiah, King Josiah went to meet against him, against Necho. And he sent to him messengers, Necho sent to Josiah, saying, What is it to me and you, O king of Judah? I come not against you today to make war, but only against the place of my war, Karchemish against the Assyrians, and God told me to hasten. You take heed of the God with me, lest he ruin you. And Josiah did not turn his face from him, but he fortified himself to war, wage war against him. And he hearkened not according to the words of Pharaoh Necho from out of the mouth of God. So amazing that God speaks through Pharaoh here. And um, he came to wage war in the plain of Megiddo, and now who the he is, if it's Necho or Josiah, but uh, probably Josiah. And the bowmen shot unto King Josiah, and the king said to his servants, Lead me out, for I am in pain exceedingly. And his servants led him from the chariot and hauled him upon the second chariot, which was his. And they led him to Jerusalem, and he died and was entombed, uh, was entombed, 
with his fathers, and all Jew, uh, Judah mourned. Now, that could be what it's uh, talking about, where um, Josiah is slain at Megiddo. But we have one more place, and let's go find that one here. And that is in Revelation 16, 12, the sixth bowl, the future. And the sixth angel poured out his bowl upon the great river Euphrates, which is where Karchemish was. See, that whole thing I just read could be a future event still, uh, because Karchemish was there on the river Euphrates. And its water was dried up that the way of the kings should be prepared of the ones from the rising of the sun, where that could be anybody east. Uh, Mesopotamia. They all came across that northern fertile crescent and down through uh, the entrance of Hamath and down into Megiddo into Israel. And the Euphrates was up north, the river Euphrates, and it went across all the way down uh, the fertile crescent down to Babylon. And I saw from out of the mouth of the dragon and from out of the mouth of the wild beast and from out of the mouth of the false prophet three unclean spirits as frogs. For they are de- spirits of demons uh, going, doing signs, which go forth. And now it could be the, the, the beast, uh, Satan, and the false prophet. And they go forth into the kings of the entire inhabitable world. See, now in the last place, I mentioned the, uh, the entire inhabitable world. The same exact words here. Uh, to gather them together for battle of that great day of God Almighty. So this is the great day of the biggest battle ever in history. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is the one being vigilant and keeping his garments, that he should not walk uh, naked. Uh, And they shall see his indecency. And he gathered them together into the place being called in Hebrew Armageddon. And Arma is a a harma, is a harm, is a, a mountain. Magadon, the mountain of Megiddo, or the hill of Megiddo is what it's talking about. Har and the Hebrew is number 2022 20, and 2023. 20, uh, so the future event that Deborah and Barak see, and their, uh, the desire for wealth that they did not have, from out of the heaven they deployed. The stars from out of their order deployed against Sisera. Well, now there was no mention of any stars. I believe this is in a referring to the future event of a Sisara replacement. The rushing stream Kishon, which came out of where today's Haifa is, and it went westward, uh, cast them out. The rushing stream of antiquity. The rushing stream Kishon, my mighty soul shall trample them. Then they were impeded. The heels of horses were hastened with diligence by his mighty ones. Curse Meroz, said the angel of the Lord. So this uh, wasn't, didn't happen with Deborah and Barak. I don't see that. Future maybe in the Meroz. I'm not sure who Meroz. Maybe we'll see who a Meroz is in the future. Maybe it'll pop up and we'll say, whoa, there it is. With a curse, curse everyone dwelling uh, it. For they came not to help, to the help of the Lord. The Lord is helper among the warriors. May she be blessed from out of women. Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite, who killed Sisara. From the women in the tent, may she be blessed. He asked her for water, Sisera, and she gave him milk to him in a pan. She drew near butter of strong ones. She stretched out her hand for a peg, a tent peg, and her hammer, and her right for the hammer of a laborer. And she struck Sisera with a hammer, and she nailed his head, and she struck, and she nailed his temple. In between her feet, bowing, he fell. He slept between her feet. He bent. He fell in which he bent. There he fell miserably. Now it changes here, and it says, Through the window, the mother of Sisera looked and studied through the latticed window where she was living. Why was his chariot late to arrive? Why did the track of his chariots pass time? She couldn't see any chariots coming. Her leading wise lady answered to her, and she returned her words to herself. They shall not find, shall they not find him dividing the spoils? He's taking time, all the defeat, they have all these spoils to take. That's why he hasn't come. 
befriending friends to give a mighty head ruler the spoils of dyed things to Sisera, spoiled of dyed embroidery dipped, all these things of the Jews that Sisera is going to do is what they are imagining. Dyed embroidered works, spoils for his necks. So this is what they were seeing, but Deborah is saying that. But thus may all your enemies be destroyed, O Lord, and the ones loving him be as the rising of the sun in his power. And the land was quiet, 40 years. Oh, that we could cry out that. Uh, thus may all of your enemies be destroyed, O Lord, and God will know his enemies and will do that. And the ones loving him be as the Anatoli to Eliu, the rising of the sun in his power. And when we are transformed into uh, different beings, uh, taking a different form in power of the glory of God, then we will, and we are the ones that love him, we will be uh, as these people uh, that Deborah sees. Wonderful, beautiful chapter. Chapter 6, next one we're going to go into the story of Gideon. Really interesting story. I hope you'll continue and join us in chapter 6. And until then, God bless.